Please welcome Annie Meehan. Good morning. When you think of the word impact, what do you think of? Well, I certainly didn't think of the car coming up 70 miles per hour behind me yesterday that hit me on impact. But I was planning on talking to you about impact, so I thought it's funny how impact comes into our lives. You know, I wonder, Gay, if I looked you in the eye and I said, Gay, nobody, and I mean nobody, thinks you're as great as you think you are. That would leave an impact. Or, man, I love your sweater. I mean, that's a pretty sweater. That would leave an impact. Now, the hard part for me is that those words that I spoke to Gay, and let me just tell you, Gay is great. Gay's fabulous. But those words were spoken by my mom. Wow. Just a couple of years ago. And then those other words, well, they were spoken by a security agent at an airport like this. I like your dress. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. <laughs> wow. The funny thing about words is they impact us in this great and deep way. You see, my mom's words, who struggles with some mental illness issues, she wouldn't say she ever said them, and she certainly wouldn't say she meant them. But trust me, they impacted me. They left me in bed that night with tears, wondering, first of all, do I think I'm great? I'm not sure. And second of all, does anyone else? But after I processed through, I thought, there's something wonderful about thinking you're great at something you do in life, that you're successful and that you're living in a place and working in a place where you can make a positive impact on the world. I let the words slide off when my heart let them go and my mind remembered that being great is about thinking we're all great. It's not about being arrogant, it's about being confident, believing in ourselves and believing other people are great as well. Now the interesting woman at the airport with her arms crossed, tough as could be, who told me I looked nice in a dress, had no idea that I was leaving a trip that I had just won, an incentive trip with a bunch of really fit people on a beach in Florida. If there is something to make you feel self-conscious, it's being on a beach, a beach with a bunch of fit people. I felt so self-conscious. And I said to that woman, well, thank you so much. I don't feel very good in my dress. And she said, well, listen, I wouldn't have said it if I didn't mean it. I'm not that nice. I was like, okay, I got it. But words are impactful. Life is impactful. And I love to teach people how to lead with impact. And I love to teach them how to lead with a positive impact. You see, we're always making an impact on people around us. We're always touching and affecting lives. In fact, the other day or a couple of months ago, I get to visit colleges with my children. I have three children ages 17 to 27. I'm 28, please don't do the math. Um, and I was with my 17-year-old driving around, and we were driving actually to North Dakota to visit the university. And my son said to me, you know, Mom, I'm more like Dad than you. I said, I, I know, honey, I know. No, really, I, I, I'm more like dad than you. I said, I got it. Well, I just want you to know, since I was 12 years old, I've been sitting in the back of the car. And I'm a watcher, so my husband's real quiet. He's an observer. I'm not quite as quiet. Um, and he said, I watch you and dad. And I always watch dad drive, and I wonder, why does dad drive like that? You know, dad's right-handed, but he always drives with his left hand. And I know he can throw a ball with his left hand, but why does he always drive with his left hand? Since I was 12 years old, I've been thinking about this and wondering, why? Why does he drive with his left hand? And then one day I figured it out. I was getting close to being 16, and I realized I'm being trained to drive with two hands, but now I know why Dad drives with his left hand. You see, he drives with his left hand to always leave his right hand available so that you can hold it whenever you want. We make an impact by our actions and by what we do. We make an impact. People are watching you everywhere you go, everything you do and say and don't do. Impact happens in our lives. My husband and I together own a gym in the Twin City area, and we have this fabulous trainer. Now, he wasn't always fabulous. I trained him up. No, I don't tell him I said that. Okay, he'll make me work out harder. But when I first interviewed him, he was 22 years old. He was straight out of college, and he wanted to play for the NFL so bad. He put his head down and he said, I really want the job. I'd like to work here with you. I said, okay, good. Can you look at me? Please look at me. I thought, if you can't look me in the eye, how are you going to be able to look my clients in the eye? That was eight and a half years ago when we hired him. And about four years ago, I decided to go into the gym for a workout. Now, it might seem silly that I haven't worked out in four and a half years, but I just don't work out at my own gym very often. It's too hard for me to go in there and work out. I want to be there for my clients when I'm there, and they want me to check their membership. 
But I went into the gym and we were doing a group fitness class. It was a lot of fun. We were having a great time. But then he says, five more. Give me five more. I know you can do it. And I say, you're trying to kill us. What is going on? And they're like, leave him alone. The ladies, oh, they got so mad at me. Quit picking on Adam. I'm like, he's picking on us. We love Adam. I'm thinking, I love Adam too. Or he wouldn't still work here. But he, we love Adam. They were so defensive. They were so strong about how he spoke to them. And he said, just leave him alone. Let's keep going. So I said, fine. We kept working out. Now let me tell you that the average age client in my gym is a 75-year-old female. They love him. They cook for him. They invite him to lunch. They invite him to dinner. They bake big pans of brownies and bring him into the gym. So I said, why do they love you so much? After they had all left. And he said, it's only female. They can't help it. They just love me. And we had a good laugh about it. He is a fabulous guy. And I truly do love him. Uh, I'm so glad he's part of our team. And truly, we are a team. We are the owners, but it doesn't matter whether you are cleaning our gym, or you are training, or you are giving a massage, or you are working the front desk. We are equal, and equally important. But when I went home that night, I started thinking about what had happened that day. Why? I mean, these women are loyal to him. Loyalty like I have never felt or seen before. And I got home, and at night, I slow down, and I start to process my day and think about what did he do? What does he do? that makes people so committed to him, so loyal, so dedicated. They give him money and they give him so much more. And I thought, okay, he is cuter than me. He's definitely younger than me and he is buff. I mean, he is a good looking man, right? So I can get that. But is that enough? Is that enough to make someone loyal to you because you're young, cute and in great shape? No, it wasn't enough. So I laid there and I thought about it and I wondered, what does he do differently than the rest of the people that I meet? And I realize what he does. He looks at him. Hey, Kevin, I got you. I believe in you. I know you're tired today, but I, I'm here with you. I'm here with you, and I'm going to stay with you until you get to where you want to be. I don't want to do it. No, no, Kevin, you, you got it. He looks them in the eye. He speaks their name, and he pours encouragement and belief in them. He touches them on the shoulder. He touches them on the back, and he says, I will be here with you until you get to where you want to go. Because the gym is a part-time investment for me, I don't spend a lot of time there anymore. Recently, I had the pleasure of meeting one of my clients who's been with us for a little over a year. He was dragged in the doors at 450 pounds. He had given up on the idea of doing anything with his life. He was retired, comfortable in his chair with his bag of chips and his Coke. His wife dragged him in, and when he walked through the door, our trainer took his hand and said, I'll believe in you until you believe in yourself, and then I'll believe in you some more. And I realized that's why my clients love him so much, is that he's committed to them. He's investing in them. He believes in them. He's intentional with his words and his actions to each and every client. But then it got me to thinking some more. The danger with going to bed with a busy head at night is that it gets you thinking and challenging yourself on what you missed during the day and what more you could have done. And I start thinking about the people in our lives, the relationships that we have in and outside our homes. I thought how easy it is to say, of course I love my spouse. Oh yeah, I love my kids. Oh yeah, my team is great. Oh yeah, I really love my best friend. But then I wondered, when was the last time I looked my husband in the eyes, touched his arm and said, I believe in you. And I'm here for you. Good and bad days, I'm here. When was the last time I did it for my child or my mom? When was the last time we did it for our coworkers that were struggling either in or outside work that we said, we know this project is overwhelming, but I'm here with you and I'm going to stay here until you get to where you want to go. And even though you don't believe in yourself, I'm going to believe in you until you believe in yourself. And then I'm going to believe in you some more, even when you do. That changes things. Being intentional is about getting up every morning and deciding that I'm going to live with a positive impact. I use acronyms to teach, and impact is my first one. That I stands for being intentional. It's not about our to-do list. It's about how we are, how we show up in the world, that we decide to be patient with a child or a parent or a coworker that tells us the same stories over and over again because they need to process. It's about kindness when we're in rush hour and we need to get someplace, but instead we slow down and let someone in. Living a life of impact, being intentional about our words and our actions, even when we have no idea someone is right behind us watching, changes things. 
And for me, it's had the privilege of changing my business. It changes my household. There's little simple things that we can do. I am a speaker first, but I am a coach, and I love walking one-on-one -on -one with people. And when they tell me this can't work, helping show them how it can. When people are challenged by their excuses, they've told themselves over and over again, changing that to a reason why. So I want to ask you, as you leave this room today and you make an impact, will it be positive or negative? Will you bring someone up or let them down?